Someone asked a man why he didn't have any friends, and he said that friendship is like a rare and valuable diamond. There are a lot of fakes out there. If we keep making the same mistake, we'll finally believe that there are no real diamonds in the world and that all of them are fake. Another man said that a friend is someone that you should respect and enjoy, but it's very hard to find real, useful friends. People asked a loner if he liked being alone, going on trips by himself, eating by himself, and sitting in a spot away from everyone else. He told her that he doesn't like being alone, but he also doesn't meet new people. He does not want anyone to let him down again. The story of the child who made friends with an apple tree in the forest is a good way to explain this. She would often go there, swing from the tree's branches, eat its apples and make up stories about being king of the forest. There was a sunny day and the child was tired of playing. He hid from the sun under the tree branches and went to sleep. The tree was glad to have a real friend, but the kid stopped coming to see her as time went on because she made new friends and got other jobs. I stopped going to see her sometimes. When the tree saw that the child was upset one day, it asked him what was wrong. The boy said with sad eyes that he didn't play in its trees anymore because he didn't feel like a king, because a king has money and he didn't have any. But there were apples on the tree. The boy suggested that they sell them to make money and get back together with their friends. The tree said yes, and the boy picked some apples to sell. He never came back, though. The tree waited for a long time and looked back at the way it came. The boy finally came back, but he wasn't happy. He was sad. He said he missed the tree and didn't come back after selling the apples because he had a lot of troubles. He couldn't have family, friends or children like everyone else because he didn't have his own home. He didn't understand why he was friends with the tree since it couldn't give him a place to live. The tree told the boy that he could be happy again if he cut off some of its branches and built his own house. The boy cut down all the trees, built his house and lived a happy life until he died. He forgot about his old friend, the apple tree. The man said he wanted to sail away to a faraway place where he wouldn't have to see anyone. He was already old and tired of life. He meant to get a boat, but didn't know where to look. When the tree saw how sad its friend was, it didn't say a word. With an axe, the man cut the tree stem in a circle shape. He tried hitting the axe a few times and finally got it right. He then left without looking back, leaving his old friend, the apple tree, behind. As time went on, the rain fed the trunk that was still there, and the sun warmed the ground around it, luring animals that stopped to enjoy life on it. The trunk, on the other hand, no longer found happiness in anything and lost sight of what it loved most in the world. Now, he thought everything was crazy. That being said, the world did not end. One day, a small green shoot grew from the stem. It came from his soul and quickly grew into a beautiful apple tree that was full of power and life. He got back to enjoying life. But one day, a kid came up to him. The kid said, Hello, let's be friends. As George said, Inside every cynical person, there is a disappointed idealist who knows that maybe, just maybe, they used to be someone's apple tree. The tree just watched and didn't say anything because even though she liked life, she no longer believed in true bonds. Be kind to people who don't trust others or have any friends. They're not bad because of that. You may have been an apple tree to someone too many times and no longer believe in true friendship. Things like this show us that we shouldn't always trust people, but you can bring about change. You can be a real friend who shows others how to be a real friend, like an apple tree with bounds. Thanks to the child's care and persistence, the apple tree learned to trust again over time. She learned that friendship, even though it could be hard at times, was a strong bond 
that could make her life happy and meaningful. As the tree and the child became friends, the tree's heart filled with hope and faith was born again. This shows that it is possible to make real bonds with other people, even after being let down and becoming skeptical. In the community, the story of the apple tree has become a tale that reminds everyone that real and lasting friendship can change your life, even when things go wrong or you don't believe in it. This is interesting information about how friendship and social connections are good for our health and well-being. Close friendships are a great source of support because they lower stress. Having someone you can talk to about your worries and concerns can make stress a lot less harmful. Social interactions also cause chemicals like oxytocin to be released, which not only lowers stress, but also makes you feel calm. Having friends is good for your mental health because they bring you comfort and joy when things are going well and help you when things are bad. Having close friends is linked to being happier with your life and feeling better in general. Positive social ties have been shown to make the body's protections stronger. People who keep up good relationships have stronger immune systems. This means they can fight off sickness better and get better faster. Social connections can also affect how long you live. Studies show that people who have lots of friends and family tend to live longer. Having close friends and a busy social network is linked to living longer, and having good relationships can be just as good for you as giving up smoking or sticking to an exercise routine. Having friends and family is also important because it lowers the risk of sadness. Depression is less likely to happen to people who have strong social ties, and if they do get depressed, their symptoms are usually not as bad. Getting help from other people is a big part of getting over sadness and other mental health problems. Close friendships also boost self-esteem by making you feel like you fit and are valid. Having close friends can help you feel better about yourself and give you more confidence. Friends can give you good comments and help you feel good about yourself. Having good bonds is also linked to healthy behavior. Having friends who live a busy, healthy and exercise-based lifestyle can help us make better choices about our own. Lastly, having close friends is an important part of becoming emotionally strong. Having friends who can offer mental support when things are tough can make it easier to deal with problems and get through tough times. Social connections and friendships not only make us happy, but they are also very important to our health and well-being. Making and keeping real relationships with other people can be seen as one of the best things we can do for our mental and physical health. In this process, empathy is very important. Having empathy means being able to understand and share someone else's feelings. This means being able to put yourself in their shoes and see things from their point of view. Empathy makes mental bonds stronger and relationships better between people. People are more likely to believe us and let our guard down when we feel like they understand us. Empathy is also important for fixing problems because it helps us see things from the other person's point of view and understand how they feel. This makes it easier to find answers that work for everyone. Empathy also helps us be more tolerant by helping us understand other people's feelings and points of view. This makes us more open to differences and more respectful of racial, religious and social ones. Another aspect of empathy is creating emotional support. This is because empathy lets us really help others by understanding and caring about their feelings, making a space where people feel supported and respected. Human connection, on the other hand, is the feeling of bonding and closeness we get from being with other people. It involves real, useful relationships with other people and is very important for mental health. People who are linked are happy, less likely to get depressed, and more satisfied with their lives. 
In addition, having strong social connections lowers the stress hormone cortisol, which makes you less stressed. People are more resilient when they have empathy and connect with others. This makes them better able to deal with problems and get through tough times. Social connections and friendships not only make us happy, but they are also very important to our health and well-being. Making and keeping real relationships with other people can be seen as one of the best things we can do for our mental and physical health. The digital age has changed the way we interact with each other in big ways, having a huge effect on the types of friendships and social ties we have. Here are some facts about how people interact with each other in the digital age. Online connections, social media sites and quick message apps have made it possible for people to meet in this digital age. This led to the rise of virtual friendships which let people form deep bonds with each other even though they live far apart. Online communities, sites like Facebook, Instagram and Twitter have changed the way we talk to our family and friends. We can share pictures, thoughts and moments from our lives right away on these networks, which keeps us connected in a way that has never been seen before. Impact on privacy. Despite the advantages, social networks have also raised concerns related to privacy and intimacy. Overexposure online can impact the way we share personal information and communicate. Instant messaging apps like WhatsApp, Messenger and Snapchat have changed the way people talk to each other by letting them share pictures and videos and have chats in real time. This makes people feel closer to each other even when they are not in the same room. Professional networks. The way we build professional networks has changed because of sites like LinkedIn. Online contacts can help you find work, work with others and grow professionally. Online communities. The digital age has made it possible for people with similar hobbies to meet and share information in online communities. This has caused certain societies to form, such as support groups and talk boards for niche themes. Mental health knowledge. Social media has also been very important in raising awareness about mental health because it lets people share their stories and look for help online. Virtual groups have been very important in making mental health problems less of a taboo subject. Problems with living in the digital age. While being connected to the internet has its benefits, it has also caused problems like abuse and social anxiety. Constant comparison and the stress of having to keep up with what's going on online can be bad for your mental and emotional health. The digital age has expanded our opportunities for connection and given rise to new forms of friendships and social relationships. However, addressing this issue also brings unique challenges that require a balance between online connectivity and meaningful face-to-face -face relationships to maintain healthy, fulfilling relationships. During the loneliness crisis, even though we are more connected than ever, many people experience a sense of isolation. This has led to a growing awareness of the importance of social connections and has led to initiatives to tackle the loneliness crisis. Loneliness is a growing phenomenon in modern society, characterized by a profound sense of isolation and lack of meaningful connections. Even in the hyper-connected digital age we live in, many people face overwhelming loneliness. This crisis has several causes, such as social disconnection as face-to-face -face interactions decrease, especially among younger generations who are immersed in technology, affecting their social skills. Online relationships cannot always fill the emotional void of genuine human interaction. Another challenge is the stigma and shame associated with loneliness. People often feel ashamed when admitting they feel alone, making it harder to seek help or support. The modern lifestyle with busy schedules and long work hours can leave little time to develop meaningful relationships, trapping people in a routine that doesn't allow for such connections. 
Aging and loss also play a role in loneliness, as older people often face this feeling due to the loss of loved ones and diminished social relationships as they age. When family situations change, like more people living alone or families moving to different places, it can make people feel lonely, especially when they need support emotionally. As a result of social comparison, social media can make people feel even more alone when they see other people's seemingly happy links online. Being alone can lead to a number of problems, including sadness, worry, and other mental health problems. People who are lonely are more likely to have mental health issues as well as physical health issues like heart disease, obesity, and a shorter lifespan. It can also make it harder to think and remember things, especially for older people. Being lonely can make people less likely to want to hang out with other people, which can lead to a circle of social isolation. To solve this problem of loneliness, we need to make more people aware of it and teach them about its effects. Building local groups, meeting places and social events can help people bond. Giving lonely people mental support and therapy can also help them deal with their feelings and find ways to connect with other people. People can feel like they are a part of something bigger than themselves when they take part in social and neighborhood events. The loneliness disaster is a complicated issue with many sides that needs careful and understanding attention. To solve this problem, we need to not only make more social ties, but also lower the shame that comes with being lonely so that people don't mind asking for help and support when they need it. Building friendships is very important in many different kinds of groups around the world. Studies show that older people who stay socially busy and have a lot of close friends and family live longer and have a better quality of life. In fact, having friends later in life is very good for your mental and emotional health because they give you so much support. Friendships that last a long time are truly valuable because they change with us as we go through life. These ties not only make us happy and help us feel better, but they also have a big effect on our physical and mental health. Let's learn more about friendships that last a lifetime, starting in childhood and youth. At these times, Friendships are a great way to improve your social and mental skills. Friends from childhood and youth often become playmates and help each other feel better about themselves, which can lead to future relationships. As a young adult, your friends become more varied. Some friends may work with you, while others are just fun to hang out with. These connections help shape who we are as people and can be helpful when we are going through changes. Around middle age, friends tend to focus on family, work, and things they both like. During times of trouble, these friends are very important because they can offer mental and practical support. Also, relationships that have been going on for a long time become very deep. Friendships are still important for mental health as you get older. Friends can be very helpful after retirement and the death of a loved one, giving you a sense of purpose and continuation. It's clear that having friends for life is good for your mental health. People who have a lot of good friends are less likely to be depressed and lonely. Regular social interaction is good for your emotional health. Close friendships give you a safe place to talk about your feelings, which lowers stress and boosts self-esteem. In times of trouble, long-time friends can be a rock of support, providing comfort and company. Studies have also shown that people with strong social connections tend to live longer and have better quality of life. Lifelong friendships offer chances for learning, growing, and mutual acceptance, which is good for personal development. To keep friendships going, it's important to talk to each other in an open, honest and caring way, which creates an atmosphere of support and understanding. Spending quality time with friends, even when you're busy, 
is also important for keeping them going over time. It's also important to be able to adapt because people and their situations change over time. Understanding these changes in friends is key to keeping these relationships going. Lifelong friendships are important for emotional support and well-being. They make our lives better by giving us joy, comfort and a deep sense of belonging as we go through the different stages of life. The kind of relationships someone has, not the number of them, is what makes them unique. A small group of loyal friends is more valuable than a lot of shallow acquaintances because they offer emotional support, honesty and company. Quality relationships provide a safe space to share deep feelings, fears and genuine joys which supports authenticity and meaning. In many connections, it can be hard. In healthy, close relationships, emotional and practical support is real and lasts, which makes a big difference during hard times. Sincerity and authenticity are especially important in larger groups where people often put on social masks to hide their true feelings and thoughts. In healthy relationships, people are free to be themselves, which leads to a real emotional connection. In shallow relationships, where intentions can be unclear, it can be hard to build trust. But in real relationships, Trust grows over time based on core values like honesty and loyalty. Keeping up with a lot of relationships can be tiring and stressful, especially when you're trying to balance a lot of social interactions. People in quality relationships support and care deeply about each other, which makes them a safe place to be emotionally and reduces stress by creating a space where being yourself is valued and there is no judgment. In superficial connections, people only care about each other for the sake of convenience, so there isn't much reciprocity. It's not always possible to grow and change as a person in superficial relationships. In real friendships, people push and encourage each other, helping each other grow and change. Having a lot of connections doesn't always mean you feel like you belong and relationships may not be real. Genuine friendships help people feel like they fit and are loved just the way they are. Putting time and effort into good relationships where honesty, sincerity and support for each other are important builds a strong and valuable emotional base. Not only do these links make our lives better, but they also give us a safe place to go emotionally in a world that can be hard and confusing. Good social ties not only make us feel better emotionally, but they also help us become stronger and more true to ourselves. You can see not having many friends as a chance to improve your social skills and learn to value yourself. This can help you learn more about yourself and boost your confidence. Chances for personal growth come up in many forms and at different times in life. They are very important for your emotional and personal growth. You can find these chances by taking on challenges, getting through tough times, thinking about bad experiences to change your actions and views, having new experiences that broaden your view, making deep connections with others that help emotional growth and understanding and continuing to learn and educate yourself throughout your life, which can help you grow professionally and personally. Getting new skills and information can lead to new jobs and experiences. Getting out of your comfort zone, sometimes facing fear and uncertainty, can lead to deep self-discovery. These experiences build self-confidence and authenticity. To develop empathy, you need to understand differences and engage with people from various countries, backgrounds and points of view. This in-depth knowledge of differences between people encourages tolerance and respect. Learning from relationships, both sexual and friendship ones, is a good way to grow emotionally. Close relationships help you develop skills like conflict resolution, conversation and being able to support each other. Problem-solving development. 
Everyday difficulties help you learn how to solve problems, and getting past them makes you more likely to come up with new answers. Meeting and talking to people from various backgrounds, including those with different views, experiences and cultures, can help you value variety. These gatherings also encourage tolerance and understanding of differences. In every part of life, there are chances to grow. These experiences, whether they are hard or rewarding, are valuable and help with personal and emotional growth. Being open to these chances and embracing them with a positive attitude not only increases knowledge and skills, but also makes the soul and heart fuller. Let me give you some helpful tips. Encourage self-care. Taking care of yourself is a deep act of self-love and a must for your mental and physical health. Here are some important ways to encourage self-care. Be aware of your body and pay attention to what it's telling you. Taking care of yourself is an act of self-love that you earn and need. Our video ends with these tips. What did you think? Let us know in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification icon. Stoicism has many lessons that can be used in everyday life, so we encourage you to keep learning about it. Here are two videos with quiet knowledge to keep you learning until the next chance comes up.